Hi everyone, I'm here today to tell you what the psychometric function is and why you should care about it. The basic idea is this, sometimes when you wanna understand how a sensory system works or how subjects make decisions, you might wanna relate the intensity of a sensory stimulus to the choices that a subject is making. Let's use an example today of how bright a stimulus is. For example, how strong the contrast is. And think about the decisions that a subject makes in response to contrasts of varying strengths, various stimulus intensities. So let's um, let's draw this. Okay, so suppose we have here on the horizontal axis, the stimulus strength or the intensity of the stimulus. I'm gonna call that SS for stimulus strength. And again, let's imagine a grading that has various contrasts. So sometimes the contrast level might be zero. And that means that the subject is, that the stimulus is invisible. And sometimes it might be um, very strong. This would be a very high contrast, say on the right. And this might be a very high contrast on the left. So the subject's job is to say whether a stimulus appeared on the right or the left. And the intensity of that stimulus can either be very strongly to the right, very strongly to the left, or anywhere in between, and maybe even zero. That would be an invisible stimulus. So really the subject is guessing. And so what we want to look at is the subject, the subject's choices as a function of that stimulus strength that we just defined. So let's make our vertical axis here, this, the choices that a subject is making. And for the moment, let's describe that as the proportion of rightward choices. And now another way, of course, to do this would be the proportion of correct choices. And I'll talk about that in just a moment, but let's, let's think about the classic version first. So let's put one number here, which is 0.5. That would be chance performance, right? Because this is a two choice task. So chance performance is 0.5. So let's think about this. If the stimulus strength is zero, the subject has to guess. And in the simplest version of this experiment, their guess rate will just be at chance. Okay, now let's think about what happens when the stimulus is very strong and on the left. Well, the proportion of rightwards choices when the stimulus is obviously on the left is gonna be really close to zero. So we're gonna make this value here and we're gonna make it very close to zero, but maybe not quite zero. You'll see why in a moment. Similarly, when the stimulus is very strong and on the right, the subject makes almost entirely right choices. So the proportion of right choices is going to be very close to one. And again, I won't make it quite one and you'll see why uh, in just a moment. And so then we can present the subject with all these intermediate values as well. And maybe we'll calculate the proportion of choices that this subject made. And they might be a human, they could be an animal. There's lots of, uh, uh, lots of critters make choices. So you could use any kind of subject that you want. And eventually you're gonna have this set of points. And these collectively are referred to as a psychometric function. But we're not really quite done yet because as you can see, these are not really connected to each other in many ways. Well, what might you do about that? Well, I don't know. I mean, you could just draw a line connecting them, like just draw a straight line between each one. But another way you might do it is to fit a function to this. Um, and there's a number of different functions that you might fit, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that right now. But the usefulness of this is that when you fit a function, then you can get parameters from the function and you can compare those across subjects. Like maybe you're wondering whether tall people have a different psychometric function than short people. Or um, you can also compare the same subject psychometric function under different conditions. Like you might wonder, for example, whether the psychometric function is the same for people who um, are sleep deprived versus people who are very alert. And in fact, this example might be kind of a useful one because one of the parameters that you would get from fitting a psychometric function is what we call the sensitivity. And I'm gonna call that for the moment um, the sigma squared. And that refers to a particular way of parameterizing this function using a cumulative Gaussian. But don't worry too much about that for now. The, the point is that this parameter here, this tells you about the steepness of the psychometric function. And maybe we would measure a psychometric function for this subject when they were very tired. And then we do the same thing again when they were really awake. And we might find that their psychometric function in this condition of alertness was much steeper. Okay, and a steeper psychometric function is said to have higher sensitivity. That's something that might change from moment to moment. Another parameter um, that you might fit uh, is, is the bias. So you might have a subject that just really likes to make rightwards choices, in which case their psychometric function might look kind of like that, okay? And also you might notice going back to our original one, oh, I should just put the, the bias there. I'm gonna call that the, um, the mean, because um, in the cumulative Gaussian, that would be the mean of the distribution. So, so far the parameters we talked about are the bias, the sensitivity, and those just tell you um, how sensitive the subject is and their tendency to make one choice uh, as a function um, as opposed to the other choice. And then there's one more parameter that you might wanna think about, and that's the difference between something we call a lapse rate. 
So if you look at the values out here around zero, you'll notice that even as we make have lots and lots of stimulus strength, the subject's performance don't, doesn't quite go to zero. And it doesn't quite, at least for this example here, for this guy, it doesn't quite go to one. And we call that um, difference between the, the, um, the performance that the subject actually saturates at versus perfect performance, we call that a lapse rate. And there's kind of an interesting history around the lapse rate and also some recent papers that have thought of it more deeply. Sometimes you might fit two lapse rates, but these are the basic parameters um, of a psychometric function that you might care about. Okay, so finally, just a tiny bit of bonus content. You might wonder, why are we even doing this? This proportion of right word, is this just like a way of being annoying and making it confusing? No, there's a really good reason to do it. And, and one way that, that will make that obvious is by thinking about this curve that's quite biased. So remember, this was for the subject that, for whatever reason, liked making rightwards choices more than leftwards choices. And if you just plot the proportion correct, so I'm now going to call that P of C, where C stands for correct. So we're going to make exactly the same plot. We have stimulus strength here, but now we have proportion correct on the vertical axis, and it's going to look something like this. The problem is that you couldn't tell whether there's a difference between percent correct on the left or the right. So you could plot this in terms of percent correct, but the fact that the subject is very biased would be hidden to you in this visualization. And so that's why it can be really nice to plot this as a function, um, uh, to plot this, the, the, the vertical axis be the proportion of a particular choice. It doesn't have to be right. If you prefer left, you do you. Uh, but it's, it's um, a much more informative way than plotting percent correct or proportion correct, even though, of course, that's really what we're used to um, thinking about uh, uh, in a more common way. Okay, so I am going to stop there and thank you very much. And I hope that explained what the psychometric function is. Thanks a lot.